Hey folks, today we're going to talk about cost of production. So for a lot of people today, they have always wondered what it would be like to start a business. So there's a lot of factors to consider when starting a business, such as the location, the type of good, the pricing, a lot of information. So today we'll do a much more kind of easier way to think about um, business, starting a business, but from the perspective of the cost uh, uh, side. So cost of production is a good way to understand what exactly you need to have and in order to have a hopefully successful business. So with cost of production, we're gonna focus on total costs of running a business. Uh, let's use the example in this case of a small business uh, let's call this the mobile car wash that you may have in mind. You may kind of use today's internet access to find clients, uh, a much more efficient way to go to a person's home and wash their vehicle. So a mobile car wash business is our example for today. Now with total cost, we know that this is a function of variable costs plus fixed costs. So we have a lot of examples of variable costs, such as the inputs to make a final good, uh, or by definition, it is the amount of um, money a company would spend, a person would spend, uh, when there is an increase in the production, so it varies based upon the production, you can also look at how labor can be seen as a semi-variable cost. If you have a, an employee, a worker who's, who's working four or six hours, uh, that can be seen as fixed cost. But if that employee works beyond four or six hours, let's say eight hours, 10 hours, overtime, that becomes a variable cost. At the same time, fixed costs could include things such as a lease of a factory, the rent that you pay per month. Um, hence, it does not change as you produce more goods. So we're going to focus on variable costs and fixed costs. But since you are a small business owner, we're going to focus kind of more on what you would charge uh, per type of vehicle you're going to clean. So in order for this to uh, make sense, we have to have information. So here we have quantity, and we can look at quantity as the number of cars per day that you are going to clean, wash, detail, etc. Let's make it simple. Let's go from zero, one, two, three, four, and five vehicles in one day. If you want, you could also kind of um, make a note for the types of vehicles we, we are washing. So for example, in one day, you may have no cars for zero, uh, no cars. And perhaps the first vehicle you're going to clean is a compact vehicle, let's say a Honda Civic. The second car you have set in your schedule could be a four-door sedan, a Toyota Camry, the third vehicle you're going to wash detail could be a Ford F-150, a truck. And the fourth vehicle in that day, let's say a Chevy Tahoe, an SUV. And the fifth car, let's say you are going to wash a Ferrari a 360. Very expensive vehicle. So now we know the types of vehicles you are going to wash in that given day. So now we need to know exactly how much cost you would need to incur to have a successful business. So now we can label TC, which stands for total cost, and then we can look at each specific variable and fixed costs, which again, added together, gives you the, the total cost. So for variable costs, VC variable costs, you may have your own price chart. So obviously for zero cars, you are not gonna charge any amount of money. 
But maybe for a Honda Civic, it's a compact. You can maybe finish washing, detailing in about an hour. You're going to charge maybe $10 for compact vehicles. For a Camry, it's a four-door, so it may take an extra half hour. Uh, now you are going to charge a four-door sedan $15. F-150, you do have a bigger vehicle to go around, a longer cab, a uh, longer bed, so you, maybe you're going to charge for, for trucks $22. A Chevy Tahoe, you have an SUV, so now you need more time to put into. Uh, so now you may charge $30 for an SUV. And for a luxury sports car, oh gosh, let's say you are going to charge $50 to have a Ferrari detailed. So once we have the variable costs, what you plan on charging uh, based on the type of vehicle you are going to clean, now we have to know what is the fixed cost. So if you own a mobile car wash, chances are you have all of your equipment in your van, in your vehicle, and perhaps the only lease that you are going, the only thing you're going to have to pay that's a fixed cost would be the lease of the vehicle. And that could be the monthly payment that you're paying on. So to make things simple, if you're paying a lease of $300 for the, the van, and we are going to divide that by 30 days, we are going to see a $10 fixed cost for the van lease per day. Now again, there are more components under variable and fixed costs, but we're going to focus on just these two uh, factors, just what you will charge for the type of vehicle and what you're paying per day on the lease of your van uh, when you are going to you know, clean and, and detail a vehicle. So I want you to see that when you have variable cost and fixed cost, we can now add these two components and by doing that, we can get total costs. So when we add for quantity zero, we're gonna, we're gonna get $10 like so. And this makes sense because if you wash zero cars, you're still gonna have to pay a lease, the per day lease of the, of the van. So fixed costs at $10 per day, you need to pay that regardless if you wash a vehicle or not. Now, as we go into one vehicle, we can then see uh, $10 plus $10, that becomes $20. With the second vehicle of a Camry, $15 plus $10 gives us $25 for total costs. $22 plus fixed cost at $10, this becomes $32. Variable cost, $30 plus fixed cost at $10 gives us $40. And then last but not least, we have $50 plus $10 fixed costs. We have a total of $60 in total costs. And again, we can see that total cost is a function of variable cost plus fixed cost. So once we have the costs set, this is kind of where it gets more interesting. So now we want to find the average cost of your small business. So to do that, we need to know what is the average total cost, the average variable cost, the average fixed cost, and the marginal cost of the business. So to find the last four columns, average total cost will simply be the total cost over the quantity for average variable costs, it's going to be the variable cost over quantity. For the average fixed costs, it's going to be the fixed costs over quantity. And for the marginal cost, it's going to, be, going to be the change in total cost over the change in quantity. So if we go back to our chart, we can now find the following average cost ATC, ABC, AFC, and MC. So at this time, you can go ahead and fill in the columns and see what you get. Okay, so after filling out each column, you should get numbers as such.
for ATC, the average to uh, total cost from $20 at one vehicle all the way down to $12 for five vehicles. Average variable costs, $10 at one vehicle and $10 down to five vehicles. The average fixed costs, $10, one vehicle, down to $2 at five vehicles. And the marginal costs from $10 at one vehicle and $20 at the fifth vehicle. So now we want to look at and understand exactly what do these columns mean. So again, we are looking at what the average total cost is going to be if you are going to uh, set prices as such and your lease for the van for the mobile car wash is $10 per day. That is what you'd expect to pay per day uh, in operating your business. The variable cost is going to focus solely on what you charge uh, for the types of vehicles. The fixed cost, again, on average, you can kind of see this as what you are going to pay per day uh, for, for, for washing vehicles based upon the lease of the van that you're using uh, to wash the vehicles. Now, the more important column, I think, would be the marginal cost. Because again, this will tell you that as you wash one more vehicle, this is going to show exactly how much you could expect to pay cost-wise in operation for your business. So based on what we have, these four columns, we could do a couple things, kind of look at what common numbers they share, or uh, better yet, we can graph the last four columns 